Welcome to another episode of Galactic Ambassadors podcast. My name is Julia Balaz, and today I'm joined by Jody Bonham, who is living in Texas in America. I'm coming to you from Ireland. And uh, Jody has been recently certified as Quantum Soul Guidance Practitioner. She's officially practicing Galactic Astrology Soul Reading. And I really look forward to learning about her story, her background. She has quite amazing natal chart. Uh, we have permission to bring it on screen and share it with you. So I hope the viewers will learn new things astrologically in regards to Galactic Astrology as well and just really learning about your style of delivering quantum soul guidance sessions your journey with the course and and all that welcome jody how are you today thank you i'm so good we are recording this on 19th of april 2024 just a day before the exact conjunction between jupiter and uranus for jody this is occurring in 12th house and it's same for me and uh, we're just chatting about our experiences how it influences and it's really quite interesting to see how it uh, impacts our subconscious, our uh, deep belief systems, and how Uranus is beautifully liberating the inner being, the old ways we used to maybe think about ourselves, our world, and how situations are happening one after another to help us kind of release whatever was limiting us because Jupiter is there to bring expansion and growth and a lot of blessings as well into our lives. So I uh, found just nice validation in hearing about your experiences as well. Do you want to share a little bit of how it has been? You have really large 12th house. If we use the Placidus house system, I'll show the chart shortly. Uh, my 12th house also is expanded quite large. So it's a very long transit for Uranus to go through my 12th house. And it's same for you. How is that for you in, in that experience? Well, I like looking at that 12 or 13 year period from the last conjunction. It's actually right when I first started watching YouTube videos on astrology and wanting to move that direction and learn things. The birth of my YouTube channel was just a couple of months after the last conjunction. And for me personally, there have been limiting beliefs on the last few weeks have just taken care of that emotionally. Family that I have felt block from because we have a little bit different belief system. I didn't have to work at this. I didn't have to plan it. But that love and joy and growth that I have felt was also being felt by my mother, my oldest daughter. And it only took a few days and a few words and a few conversations to realize those limiting beliefs actually are, they're really nothing compared to love and expansion that is available to us. Really good to hear. For some people, it's quite intense time. It's very extreme. They feel like they're under the grinding sto stones, but it doesn't seem to be your experience and it's not mine either. And uh, perhaps it's because there are no planets, no major planets conjuncting the conjunction or opposing or aspecting. Like, you know, it's not as intense for people that don't have these strong angles or additional planet uh, working with the conjunction. So that's the big difference between kind of newbies to astrology always say, how come I don't really feel anything during this big event that everybody's talking about and really about how it interacts with your natal charts, uh, planets, placements. It's a nice kind yeah. of validation to, to that through listening to your story. And that Uranus experience of kind of sudden changes like we, it, it just happens it just happens it's not like we have to work hard at it focus on I it i couldn't have planned for it actually <laughs> there's no way well jody i'm so curious to hear about your story in terms of your connection to spirituality to perceiving the other side other realms when i read through your quantum soul guidance certification documents where you submitted your sample client sessions. It seems to me that you have a lot of experience with other modalities as well, but you don't have a website where we can kind of learn about all that by choice. You're quite happy to work through the links that you have displayed on your Linktree profile and through the practitioner 
listing on our website galacticastrology.com and that's perfectly all right it's actually a really nice example for people that may not realize that there is no pressure for any certified practitioners to have their websites and pay the monthly subscriptions and you know accrue additional costs that way you're more than welcome to just have an email a way for people to contact you and communicate in through whatever channel you are comfortable working with so very easy going in in that regard and it seems to be working fine for you so i noticed in your client sessions that you were utilizing other modalities and you you brought the stars into everyday life experience in such a beautiful tangible way whether through very simple practical rituals consciously working with the stars working with the transit like it was so beautiful to see and of course then the feedback from clients who felt they have so much more support in their life so much more guidance that kind of comes through within their own being because the connection is there through their chart it was really beautiful to see can you touch on that, your experience and uh, how you acquired all that wisdom that seems to come so naturally? First, I just want to say the the course really did help tie in all the things. Learning about the connections to the stars made all the other things make sense. It was like from the outside in, working with literal plasma rays that the sun brings to us and the other stars is my passion for sure. Uh, the sun is part of our everyday life and the energy that it brings in so naturally to us every day and other stars do that too <laughs> the ones further from us and learning that was a mind blow but at the same time it was like stitching all these pieces together in my life was raised in a christian home and by the kindest sweetest angelic parents you could ever imagine and they always wanted to do so right by everyone that they came in contact with that they wanted that for us too. Unfortunately, some of the things that they adhered to because of that religion, I went the opposite way. After I had my first Saturn return when I was 27, I left the church, I left my marriage, I left my city, and started to try and find all those spiritual things that I had experienced as a child. The connection to the planet, to the ocean, to the forest, to the animals, to numbers, to signs and synchronicities. I, I remember my first desire to connect to the sky was probably when I was about four or five years old. My dad was explaining to me how the moon always is facing us and how even though I was traveling on a windy road to my home in Fort Bragg, California, the moon would be following us. And I wanted to know how the moon moved. Being aware of the ecliptic, of how the planets traveled has been interest and uh, fascinating to me since very, very young. And to bring it back where it is, planets connection to the stars is actually something that I can point to and say, yes, this is this connection. I've always loved astrology. I started, well, on my first, on the last Jupiter-Uranus conjunction, wanting to be an astrologer. And I started writing the signs and symbols and reading every book I could find and watching many, many YouTube channels. And the connections like with the Andromeda galaxy in my chart, I can almost pinpoint the days when I realized, oh, Andromeda galaxy is speaking to me through the microwave clock going 1111 or whatever. So the way that the course brought in all those things from my childhood, where I knew I was connecting with angels and aliens and now you can see it you can look at it on the chart and view it on the um, calculator beautiful i am so happy to hear about your parents feeling so safe and secure that it was a beautiful loving home because i've noticed first thing in your chart uh, i'm going to actually take the opportunity to share it now that your fourth house uh, that your moon sitting in your fourth house the 
house of home and family and is ruled by cancer so the ruler of the fourth house is moon so it's a very comfortable position for moon to be in and mm -hmm. what a beautiful manifestation of that that yeah actually the home was good what felt safe we're using placidus house system here cusp of the fourth house is in cancer zodiac sign is ruled by moon and moon is located in the fourth house house of home this is what I was just talking about. You know, when you were talking about perceiving the outer reality or the sky quite consciously from early on, I wanted to know where your Neptune is, that kind of higher guidance, intuitive guidance, and it's in Sagittarius, conjunct the great attractor, which is all about integration of all fragments, perceiving things from multiple perspectives, and knowing that there doesn't have to be just one and only way and it's beautiful actually have you experienced it through religious perspectives you know beliefs of your own parents and then needing to leave that safety and explore the complete opposite perhaps having all those uh, different experiences after your first Saturn return and just going um, rebellious and mm. after you've you felt liberated then somehow you know learning all those important lessons finding your way back home to beautiful steady wonderful home and uh, kind of coming full circle you know what i'm seeing as a strong indicator here he's having aldebaran fixed star one of the four royal stars rising when you were born and i've noticed on your youtube channel that you made that was dedicated to a star was aldebaran so now i understand why and i'm sure it is an important guardian uh, in your life as it was rising when you were born would you like to comment on that what was it like for you to connect with this royal star I loved learning about the Bahinian stars and using, you know, the magical qualities with an Aldebaran. One of the qualities is expansion. In 2022, when I started using the star and, and the symbols associated with Aldebaran, the plant associated with Aldebaran, I really did expand. I got married and I, uh, to the love of my life, was able to like and sell a house really easily, something that I hadn't done before and all these things. I also focused on expanding my mind and my heart with this star and this starlight. I would say it really did expand in all the ways. I also gained 25 pounds <laughs> since using this Star Aldebaran, but it has been the one of the most rewarding things is learning how I do uh, behave like this star in a way and um, seeing it throughout my life. But intentionally these last couple of years, it is the eye of the bull and I I used to wear an eye patch as a child to correct uh, an eye that would go wayward. And so that focus of like that laser focus of the one eye of the bull um, has really assisted me so much. Fascinating. When you mentioned the connection to Andromeda, isn't it it's beautiful to see your south node, south lunar node? in 12th house that could which could be another indicator of why you were comfortable to connect to all that is to cosmos to greater uh, mm -hmm. life experience even in early childhood it was easy for you to just blend in and feel the nature it was speaking to you but the andromedan frequency conjuncting there it is easy for you to notice it in your life and consciously connect to it so i thought of such a interesting thing for you to mention and it's right there in your chart yes and when i in the calculator you also see the oppositions and other angles in your chart my son is opposite andromeda and so at first in the first part of my life i was not comfortable sharing those things there was very few things that i shared with my family even spiritually because i was afraid of not being good or not doing it their way so the opposition of my son and pluto to andromeda i feel was is also important because i was not comfortable sharing my heart or my even my visions with others at first 
It may also be explained perhaps by the interception. So your sun and your Mercury, your kind of ego identity, your personality and your mind, your what you think, what you want to communicate, were both in Libra and Libra is kind of hidden in a very wide sixth house. So sign Libra is not ruling any of the houses in your natal chart if we work with the Placidus house system. What you just described there is very much usually the manifestation of that where it is suppressed. But the beauty of that is that you get to grow and develop much richer, deep inner world, observe and learn a lot more because when we communicate and express, like we are making an imprint, but when we remain in silence or quiet, we can experience so much more, right? Because we are opening our senses and noticing everything, reflecting on everything. And then later in our life, usually activated through transit, when we become sure of who we are, who we came here to be, what we are here to do, how we create our stamp, how we make this world a better place, then these, that richness of that cultivation over the many years starts coming out in a really beautiful way, sometimes even in a genius way. There is always a blessing in disguise. Any challenges through astrology, when they are really understood, uh, they can be leveraged and applied in a very beautiful ways. You know, it's interesting also for you to have that super galactic center conjunct your Mercury. That could be another indicator why you wonder about how things work uh, in terms of universe and movement of planets. Like not every four-year-old will be thinking about these things, but usually people who have uh, super cosmic points like black holes conjunct their natal planets, they seem to ponder these things. People who don't have these alignments usually tend to be more interested in kind of everyday here now, much more zoomed in perspective uh, from my experience as I'm noticing it with people. So I think it's a perfect uh, position that you're putting yourself in, in becoming a galactic astrologer, soul reader, because you have these beautiful alignments that kind of support this, right? Where did you find as you started working with clients that there's something in you that kind of opens naturally, locks are unlocked, and suddenly information is coming through beautifully for clients, and it resonates. How was that experience for you to find out about that kind of magic of your being coming alive? Yeah, Julia, I think that earlier in my life I called it the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. and so that I have relied on that spirit or that higher self or it was my prayer constantly with each breath really to be that a channel for the Holy Spirit to work. However, whether that's in my retail job or as a parent or as a, a astrologer, that is my desire to be uh, clear enough so that spirit can work exactly. Thank you. That's beautiful. I've lived that prayer from very early on myself. <laughs> Would you hear it from you too? I'm curious to ask again about your chart, if you don't mind. Such mm -hmm. a distinct stellium in very wide house, if we use the Placidus. And I want to ask you about the whole sign house system. So if we applied a whole sign system where the ascendant is in Gemini, so then the whole first house would become Gemini, second house would become Cancer, third house Leo, and so on. So if you apply the whole house, the stellium instead of the sixth house would be in the fifth house. How, and also your no, uh, lunar nodes would shift from 6, 12 to 11 and 5th. So I'm curious, what is a stronger experience or is it both quite intensely the theme of the sixth house? everyday duties, a lot of responsibilities, needing to multitask and do a lot of things to maintain balance and harmony as much as possible, like a lot of demands, I, I presume? Or is it more focused on the fifth house, your children, uh, creativity, uh, passionate connections, perhaps even in 
your earlier years or, or still, is any of these feel stronger? Because you know, new astrologers who have not made up their mind yet about Placidus or whole house sign system, they are asking these questions and reflecting on charts from this perspective. And I think this chart in particular, yours, is such a good example to maybe resolve this conundrum, although I sense the answer. Would you like to comment <laughs> on that? Uh, well, Julia, one of the things I love about galactic astrology and using your calculator and is that there's almost for me no need for the houses at all anymore but i do love to use both of them i prefer a whole sign sometimes and then placidus some of the others but really the beauty of the stars is that there's that outside in almost when you look at the alignments between the planets and the stars, you can sense what area of that life it's affecting. And there's almost, for me, not as much need for those specific houses. I like to pull them all uh, because that's the kind of thing I love to do, uh, is looking at all the different ways to read the charts but i think for myself i love the fifth house because i have many children i hope to someday have many grandchildren i love passionate uh relationships even if they're very short i've had passionate relationships that just are only minutes long with complete strangers that i can feel their joy and they can feel mine yeah it's almost like the beauty of a soap bubble it, it's just so good and beautiful and then it's gone <laughs> i love that i'm so so glad you commented on that so what i'm hearing actually that it is a bit of both really and i'm noticing it in my own chart i keep going back and forth finding value in both systems and i'm sure all the others are uh, also valuable and they do work and uh, each can offer different insights to our life experience. So for you, in your case, if you have many children and really busy experiences with all what you've just shared there, naturally, it will also create busyness in the through the life area that corresponds to the sixth house, where, you know, we, we have to make a lot of choices that are these micro choices in our everyday experience in how we serve others, how we connect with others, how it impacts our relationships. So it actually is a very busy life area of the fifth and sixth house as well. So both systems do make sense. We can read the chart either way and it will fit, it'll resonate, it'll make sense. And I love how you commented on actually bringing the connection to stars gives it another even more expanded insight yeah. where things just make sense a little bit differently. In traditional astrology, there is a limit that the houses are the outside border. And with galactic astrology, that doesn't exist. There are no borders. Beautiful perspective, yeah. And certainly with, um, there is another cool, I believe the website is called Galactic Astrology Academy. The name of the wonderful gentleman escaped me, but he is a big advocate for for not geocentric, earth-based perspective on the sky, mm. influences, but heliocentric perspective from the sun. So the sun is at the center and everything else is red from that perspective. And that too can offer profound insight. Many would say that it gives more of a higher soul perspective, higher self perspective on how we experience our archetypes and what zodiac sign and degree earth is positioned in from the perspective of sun when you were born so it's quite yes. fascinating there are just endless layers to astrology some people can be put off by this but there are many who just love and thrive on exploring all these things and oh what will i find here and what will this tell me and how can i apply this to uh, understand my life and myself a little bit more the readings that i am doing now i there is so much my prayer is always to give what the client can uh, use immediately. And so the readings are often not as long. Um, they are almost like a you sit down for a nice meal and then you're done with your meal. <laughs> and then you come back for another meal. So that is the reading that I like to do now. 
But there are so many things like the rising sign that can be. There's so much information there about Eldebaran and how to use that energy than the sign that's opposite of it and how to do that. And so I really like having the ability with the galactic to go from that outside in. It's just been really a journey for me and something that I just absolutely, I love it. I want to highlight from what you just shared there that you're very adaptable in your readings and you do like, I really saw that through the reports that you've sent that you listen to where exactly your client was at the point of their life when they reached out for reading and you gave them very practical guidance for what they need right now. Like a person, if I may share, who just felt like going through a really strange period in their life, things didn't make much sense. And they were like, what's going on? Like, I feel lost. You were able to assist with that. And I loved actually how you also explored the additional possibilities, not only what's in our calculator, which is limited to 70 something points on the sky and there's so much more and I love seeing in each practice reading that you sent me you explored beyond Uh, so I love that kind of initiative and your natural curiosity taking you where is most relevant for the client to see but so there was this particular client where you assisted them and they were like oh my god now things make more sense thank you so much and then a little later they were ready to explore other aspects of their life areas so there was different focus on relationship career house relocation so many really practical things but also bringing the galactic element to it and it was just so activating for them based on their comments on oh my goodness there is something here that I can work with in a really beautiful way so I just want to command you uh, and respect you for that. Thank you. I love the calculator. First, I did the free calculator. And when you sign up for the course, you get more stars. When I saw Corby uh, conjunct my son in the practitioner's charts, I laughed out loud because the story of Corvus, the crow gathering water and taking it to the gods and then lying about it later. I thought, oh my gosh, this is so funny because I felt like I had to hide things that I believed inside from others. It was a a lesson for me that keeping things to yourself is different from lying, (laughs) like the story of the crow. And so finding out those different stars and the star stories and the star beings, the star energy that is in your natal chart. And sometimes it is, they're not on the calculator, but the the stars are there and they are easy to pinpoint their exact places. Uh, there's no just guessing of oh, somewhere in the Andromeda constellation. Oh no, it is specific. I love the specific truths that come from those would you say would you say that when you are guided by the spirit to find that gem that is there hidden to those who may not be as fine-tuned to observe is is it usually the voice that says oh there's something else here like there's almost like a way put on a certain planet in a chart you, you see something at first that is shown made it through the calculator, but then there's something in you that is not fully satisfied. And there's like, there's something else here. There's something else here. And then you start searching yes. about the experience. One of the modules in the course, um, you talk about the Acacia records. And that term was not something I had ever heard before. But in my prayer life, I was already very active there, but didn't know what to call it or or what it was. Anyway, looking at the chart within the records also does that shows using the pendulum also to uh, even on top of the chart, I will use the pendulum saying, I'm not sure if I'm supposed to spend most of my time here or here. Um, Beautiful. spirit, Spirit leads that. Well, is there anything else that you would like to share with our audience any uh, visions or ideas of where you kind of foresee your path as a quantum soul guidance practitioner perhaps with the strong jupiter uranus conjunction in your 12th house have you received any uh, vision of kind of where you feel you would like to head well i feel that the doors are open quantum soul guidance practitioners 
on the door. <laughs> it's there. I look forward to reading charts. I also look forward to working with other members in our community to even look at charts together and do uh, client readings. I work really closely with a couple of other students in the class. We enjoy looking at charts together and seeing those different aspects that astrologers are all different. People are all different. And so the beauty of this community, being able to draw from others' experiences and knowledge is something I am really loving a lot. And so I want to keep growing and learning how to share my findings too. If you email me and say you want a reading, it will be wonderful. But if I also work with this person and this person to deliver a reading, I I get tingles thinking about it because it's so exciting to me. And having my North Node in Libra, learning to have those relationships and share freely without fear is uh, something I'm really excited about. That just warms my heart. I'm so, so happy to hear that um, collaborative spirit, the Aquarian model. That's beautiful. So much to look forward to. Jody. would you like to call out your YouTube channel name um, or how can people reach you? Uh, what's the best way? Yes, uh, my YouTube channel is uh, Galactic Astro Babes 1111. Call it Galactic Astro Babes because... We're all total babes, but also mm -hmm. I feel that we are babies now learning how to communicate with the galactic and claiming our galactic citizenship and learning how to do that. So that describes me and I think a lot of people uh, that may be watching like, oh, I, I don't know much but I know that I feel a connection to the star. I, I know that I'm made from stardust. If that's all you have, like that is enough to get you started. And my email is the best way to get a hold of me, uh, galacticastrobabes at gmail.com. And if you are interested in a reading, just send me an email and we'll go from there. Beautiful. Really easy, no pressure. Super well done. I feel very excited for you. And it's just so beautiful to feel the passion and excitement and just a desire to explore who we are, why we came here, how we connect to all that is, uh, how can, you know, improve the quality of our life, all those things, but in a really playful and enjoyable way. Such a joy to connect with you. You have such a bright light coming through your soul, Jody. Thank you very much for following your passion, saying yes to this. And um, I look forward to keeping an eye on your YouTube channel. I subscribed today. I, I didn't realize you had one. So it's wonderful to see um, best of luck, many blessings. And I'm so honored that we can do this together on this um, auspicious day of Jupiter Uranus conjunction while it's happening in our uh, 12th house for both of us. So again, just all meant to be such a joy. Thank you, Julia. Thank you all for watching. We'll see you again in the next episode. Much love. Take care.